Hello everyone, welcome back to another awesome day, day 63 of the 100 days of hell with Python Algo Trading. Today, we'll be learning about the intuition of the linear regression and its mathematical formula. So we will try to understand from the scratch, from the very beginning, so you will be able to understand it from zero. And why this is important? Because if you learn very well this fundamental algorithm, then it will help you a lot in the upcoming complex and advanced problems. So we will try to derive everything from the scratch and I'll show you how it works. So without a further ado, let's get started. So a quick recap of the previous session, right? What we have learned so far. So let's say we are creating an algorithm to predict the stock prices. So let's say for BTC USD, so it will be price. And this is the output column we have learned that. And it is also known as the dependent variable. And here in the input, it can be anything. You can have your index and you can have any matrix here, like a uh, standard deviation, like RSI, anything, right? So for now, let's say we take here as the standard deviation. So let's say if the standard deviation is 6K, then the predicted prices could be 60K. If it is 5K, then it can be 50K for 4K, 4.5. It would be uh, 45k. These are very volatile, but for the sake of example, I am just taking this one, right? So what we generally do in linear regression, we plot the values on a scatter plot. So this is x-axis and this is y-axis. So these are the given values. So if the standard deviation is, let's say, two, four, six, eight, then it is. 40, 50, 60, and 70, right? So for 6K, it is 60. For 5K, it is 50. Around here. For 4K, it is 40. Around here. 4.5, it is somewhere here. And we can have more values like, let's say here, here. Because in real life, the data will not be in linear uh, shape. So then what we do, we plot a regression line. This is what we are predicting, right? So now in an ideal condition, what happens? This line should be exactly on all of these points, right? Then there will be no error and it will be a perfect situation. But in real life, it doesn't happen. So what we do, we just try to draw a line which is at the least or minimum distance from all these points or we can say a best fit line. This is known as the best fit line. Which means it is the best line which is like uh, with the less errors and very closer to the points, right? Best possible way. So if I draw a line here, then definitely it will not be very close, right? And if I draw a line here, then that will also not be very close. Though so these lines are not best fit. So that's why we try to draw a line which is best fit. Now we know that the equation of line is y equals to mx plus b, right? And we also know that the equation of linear regression is y is equals to beta 0 plus beta 1x plus e. Epsilon, you can say it. Now let's say these are the distance. Right. So let's say you can take it as D1, D2, D3, so on, so forth and up to Dn. So we can say these are all the errors, right? Means the difference between the ideal and the real condition. So what we can do, I can just write E, which is error, equals to D1 plus D2 and up to Dn. Now what I'll do. I'll just square these values. And now what is the reason of squaring? We have learned previously also that what will happen if we square these values, these negative values will become uh, positive, right? And also the second reason is that we punish the outliers. Let's say if any point is here, then that will be exaggerated. So we punish the outliers. So that's why we just square the values and also it becomes very easier when we calculate the and derivatives of these values. So that's why uh, we square these. Now 
what I can do? I can write like i equals one to n and d i square. Hopefully, you are able to understand. Now we know that these values are, let's say, y one, y two, right? Y one, y two, y three, and these are as the y hat. So how I can write this? E equals to up to n, then y i minus y hat y hat squared, and we know that this value of y hat is y hat equals to m x i plus b, right? So I can replace these values, and I can now write as e m b i equals to one to n y i minus m x i minus b whole square, and this is the equation. And one more thing that this is also known as the loss function. This one, loss function, or in some books it is written as j, and you can also say it is as the error function. Okay, now we have the equation for e, and this means that what we want, we want to find the minimum value of the e, and for that we have two variables m and b. Which means we can tune these variables. We can like uh, we can increase or decrease these values, and we'll be always looking for the minimum value. Because for a good model, for an efficient model, we want the errors or the loss as the minimum, right? And in order to achieve that functionality, what we will do, we will tune the m and b parameters. M is the slope, and b is the intercept on the y-axis. Now, let me show you a few more things. We have here now two condition. One. Now what I will do? I'll just keep b equals to as zero. B zero means on this the value of intercept is zero. So I can write this equation as e equals to i equals to one and y i minus m x i to the whole square. So. For now, we'll not go for a very perfect mathematical solution, but just an intuition. I'll just show you at how it will work. Now, if we change the value of slope, which is m, then what will happen? This line will change. We can like rotate this as in this direction or in this direction. The slope. We know that, right? In this direction, we can also have in in direction. Means we can only rotate the slope on its axis like this. So we know that. The error function, it will be sometime here. It can be here also. It can be here. It can be in this shape, right? It will not be exactly like parabola, but somewhere we are just assuming that it will look like something like this. So I can just try like this, right? And in the second condition, if I keep m equals to one, then what I can do? I can write like this. Y i minus x i minus b whole square. So for this also, if I change the value of b, what will happen? The intercept will like we can only move the value on this axis. Like it can be here, it can be here. If we keep changing the value of intercept, it can be here also, right? So means we can only change the direction on the uh, y axis. So this is the how it will work, and this change will also be something look like this. It will not be exactly a parabolic uh, similarly, but something look like this. So we can say that we can modify the value of e by tuning the parameters m and b, the slope and the intercept, right? So that is the basic idea behind this. Okay, let's say if we draw these values m and b on a 3D plane, it will look something like this, right? And here these red points are the the points of maximum errors, and these blue points are the point of minimum error. And we have seen in the mathematics that 
when we want to find the uh, minimum values, what we do, we go for derivatives, right? If we draw these two points M and B on a 3D plane, then it will something look like this, right? At some points, the E value will be maximum, like these points, the red points. At some points, the E value will be minimum, and that is what we are desiring, right? So he on these points, these blue points, it will be a minimum. Let's say if here only one variable x, then what we can do, we can perform the derivatives on that and we can keep that equal to zero. But here we have two variables, m and b. So we have to go for a partial derivative and we'll keep that equals to zero. So now our goal is to find the minimum value for the e and for that we will tune the value of m and b. So in short, we can say we are looking to find the value of m and b where e will be the minimum. Now, we have two formulas here to calculate m and b. Let me first write those formulas and then I'll show you how we can find those mathematical derivations from the scratch. So it will give you a really very deep insight on, into this linear regression. Okay, so to find the b, we have the formula b equals to y bar minus mx bar where x bar and y bar are the mean values and to calculate the m we have the formula summation i equals 0 to n to x i minus x bar y i minus y bar x i minus x bar square so these are the formulas for m and b now you must be definitely thinking that why and how we are getting these formulas so now to understand these formulas we will deep dive so what we'll do we will do the partial derivative of this equation with respect to b and m so let's do that so first of all let me do this with respect to b right okay so first of all let's perform the partial derivatives with respect to b of this equation so what I'll do I'll write here M and and this 2 will come here I we will apply the chain uh, method here and then uh, it will become 0 0 and it will be minus 1 so now we will equate this with this 0 what I'll do here I'll write uh, minus 2 and yi minus mxi minus b equals to 0. Then we divide by minus 2 on both the sides. So it will become and then we divide by n on both the sides. So it will be like this. Now we know that this value is y bar, right? Mean of y. So I can write like y bar. And I guess we have forgotten this m. So this m will be also here. Let me write it here m. m. y bar. Let me rewrite this. So it will be y bar minus mx bar. And we know that this will become nb over n equals to 0. So it will cross n. Now b equals to y bar minus mx bar, which is what is the formula, right? So this one is done, this one. Now we go for this. Now what we'll do, we'll plug this value of b into this equation, and we will again go for the partial derivative with reference to m. So I'll write like, Then, okay, y i minus m x i minus y bar minus it will be plus m x bar whole square. Correct. Now let's perform the uh, partial derivative and equate it with zero. So it will be. Uh, 
2 yi minus mxi minus y bar plus mx bar and then here uh, this will be 0 then this will be minus xi this will be again 0 and it will be plus x bar correct so now simply we can equate this with 0 and divide by 2 so will be left with uh, mm, let's take this as common so I will write like y i minus y bar and I'll take minus y as the common so it will be minus no minus m then it will become x i minus x bar correct then let's take negative also common here so it will become negative and we will divide by negative so it will also be x i minus x bar hope it's clear to you right what we did we just took this uh, negative also outside and we divide both side by negative so it will be crossed out then what will happen we can multiply this with both the equations so it will become like this y i minus y bar multiply with x i minus x bar then m x i minus x bar multiply by x i minus x bar equals to 0 so now when we try to calculate it will become squared so now when i find the value of m so m will become uh, sigma n and y i minus y bar x i minus x bar upon x i minus x bar whole square and this was the value of the original formula okay so now we have the formula of both m and b and we know that how it is coming so now it should be very clear to you and definitely if you learn this it's very easy very straightforward just a simple mathematical calculations and it will really help you a lot in the upcoming uh, sessions okay now what we'll do we'll try to perform the linear regression with the scikit learn library and also with this and we'll compare the exact results so it should be very same because we know that when we perform linear regression and when we try to find the value of like m and b here we have two options right one is closed form solution and another is known closed form solutions closed form means we have a predefined formula to calculate any value and in known closed when we do not have any uh, formula and we perform the differentiation we perform the integration and we try to approach that value right so here it is also known as the uh, ols method ordinary list square which we will perform here and uh, in the non closed we have gradient descent it is also very very important which will be learned in the uh, upcoming videos so what we'll do here this is the like this m and b the formula we have and we'll perform the OLS method here and we'll try to compare both the results of the the cycle learn library and we'll try to also create a, our own class and it will be like we have created our own library to calculate the uh, linear regression to calculate the m and b values right so it's a little bit tricky but it's very very important if you are going for the machine learning and it will really help you a lot so in next session what we'll do we'll create a python code and we'll compare the values so this is it for the session i'll see you in the next video until then bye bye take care have a nice day and see you